Stick with me because I'm going to teach you how to make your own moonshine or fuel. The process of making moonshine is pretty much the same for making fuel. So I'm going to show you how to do it. You're going to start by heating up some water, about three to four gallons. You don't have to be exact here. Then you'll add your starch of choice. For this demonstration, I'm using corn. Okay, so we started with six bags of organic yellow cornmeal. Now, this has been boiled. You gotta be careful you don't burn it. But you wanna bring it up to a good temperature so the corn will actually absorb the liquid really well. You want it kinda like a gelatinous mix to get it. So when we put the amylase powder in, it'll absorb barely quickly. At this stage, the measurements aren't really exact. Just get a food grade plastic bucket or a pot and stir this up and you'll be good to go. So with starches or any kind of fruit, you can make alcohol. Yeast just needs the sugar. But in order to get the sugar out, you have to use amylase. Now in nature, this is done Basically, when a seed sprouts, it creates its own amylase. So sometimes in some brewing, they'll actually throw sprouts or ground up sprouts, things like malt, if you've ever heard of malt liquor. Malt is ground up sprouts that they throw in to get it started. So what I'm gonna be doing with this corn fuel alcohol is using amylase enzyme formula to speed it up. So all you need is a teaspoon here and you'll throw it in as it's cooling down. So we're going to start making what's called the wash, the initial fermentation. If you look, there's a large bowl of sugar. That is actually 10 pounds of sugar weighed out. And you see our original bucket. Now we're not actually gonna pour the sugar into this bucket. We're gonna put it in a 55 gallon drum because we're gonna put in 30 pounds of this sugar. So three of these bowls. Uh, to save money and do this on the cheap, you want to try to find probably non-food grade sugar. In other words, buy it at a livestock place. It's way cheaper than going to a big box store because after all, you're just going to ferment it. Now, this is kind of a cheat way to do it. Um, some of the old timers disapprove of this, but it, by adding all this sugar, you increase how much alcohol comes out. It's kind of a way to get the most bang for the buck. So, we're gonna be adding sugar to this, lots of it. If you plan on making large batches of alcohol, you're gonna need a 55 gallon drum. Notice it has a thermometer and spigot on it. The easiest way to get these is just buy them from a brewing company. You can try to make your own, but it's not usually worth the hassle. So I have a 55 gallon barrel here. And the next step that I'm gonna do is to actually put in the cornmeal and the water mix. So I have not added the sugar yet. So here's a bucket of wash. And what this is, is the sugar I weighed out. And I've got 15 pounds in this bucket that was put into boiling water because the sugar just breaks down a lot better when you heat it up. Now, I'm gonna fill this tub with about 45 gallons, even though it's a 55 gallon tub. And this is the first bucket going in that contains about 15 pounds of the sugar. What I'll do is I'll add two of these buckets and then just fill the rest up with water. So the wash is almost finished. The 55 gallon drum will be filled up to 45 gallons. And then I'll add this champagne yeast. The champagne yeast, I'm gonna be putting five packets in. And this is advantageous because it can take a lot of alcohol. Some yeast dies at 12%. This is specifically good for high alcohol content. You'll also need something called yeast nutrient. You'll put one teaspoon in per gallon. 
So we'll put 45 in here. And what this does is it's vitamins for yeast. It keeps them healthy so they reproduce. Also, you'll need something called yeast energizer. This is also a nutrient booster, but it propagates the speed. It makes yeast really reproduce quickly. And you want to add um, a half teaspoon per gallon. So at the end, I'm going to add amylase enzyme and you put one teaspoon per five gallons. And again, this is to release the sugar so it'll start being processed by the yeast. Before I get into the distillation portion of this, realize I'm using a large homemade unit. Many of you beginners just want to use a simple one you can buy like this. They run about 100 bucks on Amazon and I'll link them in the description. This is a good inexpensive way to get started and you can always upgrade and build your own still later. A week's passed. At this point I've drained it and ran a hose and put it in the distillation unit. Since the corn's left on the bottom, you can reuse it and I explain that here. So it's been a week. I've drained the bucket and left all the corn on the bottom, all the residue. So the wash is now, I'll show you where it went, into a, into a distiller. But you're taking a look here and what you can do is you can recycle all that corn that was on the bottom. You throw in some more sugar, fill it up with water, and it is fermenting away again for another run. As you do this over and over, the mix will grow more sour and it's considered sour mash. It's the same stuff if you've ever heard of sour whiskey. You'll use it um, until the corn kind of turns white and gets spent where there's no more starch left. So this is a homemade still. You can use this to actually do your own distilling. Now this is a demonstration I'm setting up here, but you can take a look. You can buy these drums on the internet as well as bowls just right out at a, uh, a normal store like Target or a home goods store. You can buy the piping here at Home Depot, this copper piping. And then it goes all the way up and the pipe splits. Now I'm going to explain why it does that here in a second. So what you're looking at here is a reflux distillation column. The section off here at the split, this is the condenser. And this is what turns alcohol vapors, it cools it back off and puts it back into its liquid form. Alcohol actually boils off at 170, where water boils off at 212. So we're mechanically separating them when we heat them up. So the alcohol steam raises up this column, goes into the condenser to the left, and you'll see some water pipes running into the condenser. Those actually go inside a coil that's in there, and that cool temperature of the water the alcohol steam collects to the coil and then drips back down in here. So it's a faster way to get every, the alcohol to condense. And it runs all the way into a barrel called the thumper. Now, this is running down to this thing that some people call the thumper, but really it's a bucket of water. You'll see the copper coil here going down in it. Now inside that copper is the alcohol and some of it's still steam. So when it hits this cold water, it condenses it even further so you don't lose so much steam and you get a better alcohol flow. The old timers also call that copper coil a worm. At the bottom of the thumper is a tube that comes out and simply a drain. And this is where you catch your alcohol. Now this same process is used to make fuel. So in some countries where this is legal, you could actually drink this right now. But in the US, usually you have to turn it to fuel by throwing uh, wood alcohol in it. Now, one of the most expensive parts of distilling is the fuel. This propane tank is actually not that expensive and it allows you to control the flame in a much more precise manner. But if you wanna go old school or you need to save some money, you can just burn wood under here and monitor the temperature and adjust as you go. Well, this is the final collection bucket. Here, you can make a pretty good amount of alcohol off that 55 gallon drum. 
it, depending on the proof, you could run this through the whole cycle again and get it pure and pure alcohol and raise the proof. You can use multiple distillations to get it where you want. In the US, it is a federal permit. Basically, you have to say that you're gonna make alcohol, uh, get a little, I don't think it's very expensive, like a $20 permit, and then throw wood alcohol at the end and tell them. So you are allowed to distill your own fuel. Again, if you're watching this somewhere else in the world, you can pretty much drink it right now. Whenever you brew something, the yeast produce more than the ethyl alcohol. They actually produce something called cogeners. Cogeners are what actually give you a hangover. So if you remove them out in the beginning, you can drink this and not get a hangover. When you buy the cheap rot gut liquor, it always gives you a bad hangover because they're not real careful about removing the cogeners. But when you get the high-end double and triple distilled, you can go out drinking and not get the hangover. This first part that comes off the run is called the heads. Usually you wanna remove that to be safe. Now the premium stuff is in the middle of the run. It's called the body, and it's mainly what you wanna collect, drink, or quote, use for fuel. As the temperature progresses, the run that comes off will be more the temperature of water, and there'll be a lot more water in it. And what you get off is something called the tails. Now, you can take those tails and recycle them into your next batch and put them back through the distillation over and over to try to get as much alcohol as you can out. The reason you don't drink the tails is because it's not very tasty. You get a lot more flavor of everything that went into it to make it. So you're best recycling it or using it for fuel. One last comment is, you know, you're basically dealing with flammable liquid in its vapor form. And it can be very dangerous if you get leaks. These things can blow up. So make sure that you keep safety in mind first. Try to find someone who's much better at this to show you how to do it safely. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to my channel. Also give this a thumbs up, a like, a share, or if you have something to add, remember to comment below. Thanks. Also, don't forget to stop by terranlupo.com. I have up videos that you can't see anywhere else. Currently, I have one on carnivorous plants and also how to make your own mead. All you have to do is go over and sign up at terranlupo.com and all that's free.